Hello everyone, I'm Kimitz, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Where last time we did it! We finished the final production line for our entire world, and are now producing 22.5 turbo motors per minute. And after long last, we are done. We have automated every single thing in the game. We got our heavy modular frames, we got our crystal oscillators, our poopy brown hats, and of course, our super computers! So now, this world is complete. And that means today is gonna be a bit of a send-off episode, going through some of the craziest projects we worked on, checking out our fully decorated world, and of course, getting ready for season two, because we're gonna be starting a new world very, very soon. And also, you guys can finally check out this world yourselves, because I'll be releasing my save game. It will be posted in a tweet on my Twitter, and you can get it there. And you don't need to follow me on Twitter or anything like that for it. I'm just doing this because I need to circumvent some spooky YouTube stuff, because YouTube doesn't really like things in the description where you can, you know, get down and load things. You know what I mean? Okay. So let's go around and check out our world and give it a little bit of a send-off. We're gonna be playing with the Kronos mod, meaning we can do some wacky things, like jump over our base in a single bound, or jump across the world for that matter, and just check out some of the craziest projects we've worked on, and also go through some of my never-before-seen notes. Because if you didn't know, I actually write down everything that I've done in this factory. In this whole world, in fact. And I've been kind of following these notepads for the entirety of this Let's Play. So pretty much for our turbo motor production, I pretty much knew where we were going to end up. It's just how we'd get there, you know? And I kind of went about the whole process by just trying to fill in missing numbers. Like 9 plus A equals B kind of thing. Because the only number I knew in the equation was how much rubber I was going to use, which was about 2,000. And then I kind of filled out the rest of the numbers from there. So I tried out a bunch of number combinations just to see what would work and what would be clean. And I settled on around 900 rubber for the turbo motor manufacturers. And that ended up being 1,080 for the radio control units, 480 rubber for the computers, and then all the numbers kind of filled in after that. And of course, since I'm kind of starting at the top down, I never really paid attention to how much iron I ever needed, and once I got to the bottom of the list, it's like, oh my god. So instead of doing all the math on that, I was just like, why don't I just get all of the iron? Then we'll be fine. And so was born the Iron Ark, which gathers up over 10,000 iron from this desert area. In the end though, after everything was brought back to base and smelted, it turns out we actually didn't even need that much iron. Go figure, but draining a biome was a little overkill. In fact, I tallied up all the materials we needed for the turbo motor project, and it was only like 5,010 iron per minute we needed, which is still a lot. But yeah, we kind of got a little bit much. Well, that's okay. We still need the train system out there anyway to get all of the raw quartz we needed to, because we needed a lot of that. The bauxite was kind of fine. And the rubber wasn't a big deal since we kind of planned around all that. But although we have all the totals of the items we needed, I never went ahead and calculated how many constructors and machines were needed for this one single project. But I think it's around 800. Most of them smelters and constructors <laughs> for so much wire. Oh my gosh. So much freaking wire, man. Like, I just checked my notes again and got some rough numbers, but it was about 14,000 wire we had to produce. And since we're using the iron wire recipe, uh, usually anyway, yeah, that 14,000 divided by 67.5 equals about 200 constructors. Just for wire. Ooh, and actually, if I put my world save inside of satisfactorycalculator.com, we can see how many machines in total there are in the entire world. Brother, let's check it out. And whoa, brother, I have not been on this site in a long, long time, but that's my base. That's like our little hub over here. Oh, it's so cool. I am assuming the blue lines are like the power lines, 
green line. Jeez, there's just so much more detail. So the pink is like belts. And then like the blue is supposed to be power lines. Green is... I don't even know. Oh, you jelly pads. I don't have that many. Oh, and jump pads. I see. Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> how much cable did I put down in this world? Oh, it doesn't stay on the left here, but about 6, 63,000 foundations, 8.5 thousand walkways, a little over 100 miners, <laughs> 2,224 machines. I think that can be like assemblers, constructors, and manufacturers, right? Then I got a couple bins though, and 312 kilometers of belts. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Oh gosh. The loading though. Brother. Aw, snap. <laughs> we broke the site. Oof. Alright, and we back. So we zoomed in on our base, which is pretty much an incomprehensible mess. But this is kind of like the entire world. So you can see our train system that goes over to the left here, skirts on around, and then splits between the oil platform station and this station over here, which pretty much just gets more oil. <laughs> and right beside it, the Iron Arc, which is actually longer than my base, I think? Probably. This thing covers like pretty much half the biome, right? Maybe a quarter if we really tuck things in. Oh yeah, and then we have our nuclear stuff, our beautiful 27 nuclear power plants, and I am going to assume this is radiation, yeah? Yep, because that's our nuclear cave, and it's looking bad. That's a lot of red, brother. That's a lot of red. In fact, if we're just, like, on top of the cave, in this lake here, we actually die from radiation. <laughs> yeah, it's a rough place. And once we get back to our world, we'll check it out. But first off, there's another statistics tab here that I've never really looked at. Oh, that's me. Kibitz. Production. Oh, this is all the stuff we're produ <laughs> producing. Oh my god. 17,000, almost 18,000 wire. That's a lot. That's a lot of wire, my dudes. 17,000 iron ore. Makes sense. Ingots, crude oil. What's the up and down? I don't really know what the stats mean particularly. You guys probably know though, right? Of course. You're very smart in the comments below. So lots of oil, of course. Lots of quartz. <laughs> of quartz. <laughs> We're moving on. <laughs> and you can kind of just look at the stats from here. Limestone, bad. Steel pipes, bad. Steel, bad. I don't know why. But this is pretty cool. You get to see like a bunch of totals on things. Making 288.75 heat sinks per minute? Really? Wait, how many turbo motors does it say here? Uh, 27.1? No. It's a little wrong. It's 22.5. Yeah, I'm not out. I'm not overloading the system. I don't know where it got these stats from. Maybe from the last time I played the game. I, I don't really know, but okay. Uh, let's quickly check storage. <laughs> We're storing a lot of quick wire. Oh God, 83,000 nuclear waste. You know, I haven't checked on that in a while. I was wondering what was going on there. So that's, that's, that's good. About 160,000 wire, 500,000 quick wire though. Yeah. We're making a lot of it. I don't think we're using a lot of it. Uh, quickly check the power here. Power generated maximum, 81,000. I don't even know how I would do that. Currently generated, 78. Wrong. And then power shards used, 654? My dude. I didn't even know there were that many. Oh, wait. In the collectibles tab, we can actually see. Oh, oh, wow. There's still, we didn't even get half the power slugs in the world. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, brother. That's neat nonetheless. And then of course, alternate recipes. We have all but, oh, we have them all. I just haven't unlocked this in the ma'am. Along with these two, our three as well. Well, that's pretty neato. 
Anyway though, I think we should go and check out that nuclear plant. It's looking pretty spicy with that 83,000 units of nuclear waste. Probably should have checked on that a bit sooner, eh? Okay, so let's see what the heck is going on at our nuclear plant. Well, I can tell you, first off, I am shocked at how much fuel we're using, because I filled up this entire storage container with nuclear fuel rods, and it's out. In fact, some machines, specifically this one, has almost used up all of its fuel. Oh, brother. Uh, that's bad. Well, I guess it really doesn't matter, though, because we're kind of done with the world and moving on to a new one. So, eh, whatever. In fact, we could just, like, throw nuclear waste all around the world. But I don't think it would be as fun to, like, check out and tour the world if there's nuclear waste everywhere. Anyway, I am actually extremely curious as to how much waste actually is in here now. Because I think last time we checked, we had about two-ish bins full nuclear waste. Oh gosh, and thank goodness for the Kronos mod, because things getting spicy in here, brother. Okay, so how far is this now? Eh, it's about where I expected it. Okay. So I guess because they can stack into stacks of 500 each, it's not like the end of the world. We're handling things quite well, actually. And yeah, since our system splits up the nuclear waste between the bins over there and the bins over here... Yeah, we're about at like three uh, bins full of now, right? Yeah, about there. Did they add this? Is this beeping new, by the way? I don't know. Anyway, that's all good. Anyway, aside from the nuclear waste stuff, I spent a lot of time decorating the world, as I said earlier. Added in like a really cool arch here, and a bunch of other little things around the world too. Admittedly though, most of the decorating just came down to adding in the pillars underneath all of the train tracks because I didn't really like the floating lines that were going on. So it's just something simple. But on a more major note, I finally painted the nuclear power plant. So it's all this like disgusting yellowy green. I don't know, I went for some kind of nuclear color. That was all right. And then, oh yes, uh, this is not a plug. Or I guess it could be, I don't know. <laughs> but I tried to make like the nuclear waste symbol or the radiation symbol, but it's kind of hard with rectangles. So I just tried my best. And now I say that, it really does look like a plug. And I guess that makes sense too, because you know, we plug in all of our power plants to this building and this is where all the power really comes from. Yeah, so that's neat. Oh, and then of course, I finished off the base, just adding in the remaining walls around the turbo motor factory. So it's all kind of finished up, for now. Oh yeah, I should mention, when the new update comes out for this game in around December, we'll probably come back to this world and get it up to date. Even though we'll be working on season two, I still wanna move ahead with this world as well. Because in season two, we're gonna be doing things like completely differently, and it'll be fun to come back to this style of gameplay. Oh yeah, and I called our turbo motor factory the turbo motor factory. No, 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 no. It actually has a proper name now. Thanks to you guys in the comments below in the last episode. And henceforth, this will be called the crown. TM. Because not only is this kind of like our crowning achievement to the base, and like, it literally sits right on top of it too, but also, it's the crown TM for turbo motors. And it can work for trademark as well. And I thought that was pretty clever. Also, a runner-up name was calling this the motorway. And I was like, <laughs> oh, you rascal. Oh, and the ribcage too. That was a pretty cool name too. Yeah, you guys had a lot of great suggestions actually. It was a tough one picking a name for this. So uh, thank you for all the comments, guys. Speaking of the comments though, I also asked you guys what you guys wanted to see in this kind of like final episode thing. And I've gone over most of it except for seeing the factory at full power. Literally everything running, from turbo motors to supercomputers, and everything in between. So we're gonna restart all of the trains. We will drain the bins, and we'll power on, baby, and see how badly things go, because oh man, oh man, things are gonna get rough. And I think what I'll just do instead of emptying bins is just add more bins on. There we go, so now we have a crazy amount of capacity for the turbo motors. 
And same deal for our super computers. Oh yeah, and I guess technically we have to get the heavy modular frame thing working too. Because, yeah, this is one of the other final products. I guess if we just empty one of these bins, it'll be fine. Uh, this thing only runs at like two a minute or something. Something like that. Yeah, <laughs> literally two a minute. But because we left it on for so long over the course of this series, we filled up all of these bins with heavy modular frames. But yeah, with that going, I just gotta switch on the trains and the factory is good to go. And then say goodbye to the frames because it is gonna get bad. All right, so there goes the Kibtrainian line. And then of course, the High Line. Getting all of our iron for turbo motors. And we can't forget to get our oil from Murica Station. And then finally, Big O Stop 01. Uh, which is technically our first train station, which we had to move. And that should be everything then. Yeah, the whole factory is moving and grooving. Obviously a little hard to see because of all the walls, but <laughs> trust me. Stat FPS, is it? Yeah, there we go. The frames are definitely feeling it. We're averaging around 19 to 20 while everything was off, but now with everything turned on, it's getting a little rough out there, brother. Oh yeah, things are moving, things are grooving. But the belts are all poopy, so we can't really see it. But as you can see, at least the machines are moving. So we can tell at least something's going on. Yep, the shoebox computer factory is underway as well. Oh man, oh man. And that of course means the beast is underway. Producing all of our crystal oscillators. Oh yeah, and power. Yeah, we have everything running now. Like with the supercomputers, heavy modular frames and turbo motors going, yeah. Everything pretty much has to be running for this to be going. And we're using about 20,000 megawatts. <laughs> oh wait, hold up though, hold up. I didn't even have the turbo motors running. I unpowered all the lines. So now we're gonna be producing turbo motors. And that other half of the factory is gonna be working. Oh yeah. So once we get a couple rounds of turbo motors out and deplete some of our stockpiles, that'll get the other half of our factory running and then, oh brother. Actually, you know what, just with that, that should be getting everything running. Goodness gracious, and we're at about 21 before. Oh yeah, power's creeping up as our turbo motor production begins. And look at that, 25,000 megawatts. Now that's spicy. But anyway guys, I think that is gonna be all. So after 726 hours, we're moving on to our second world. And let me tell you, I cannot freaking wait. And actually, you know what? I don't think I've binge played a game this hard in my entire life. Like this game came out, I think March 19th or so. So 726 divided by seven is about 100 hours a month divided by about 31. Oh my gosh, I played this game for about three hours and 30 minutes per day since launch. Did I do my math wrong? That doesn't seem real. I don't even know. I've played this game a lot, guys. And I can guarantee you, I'm gonna play it a whole lot more, brother. But again, that's gonna be all for this one. So remember to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe and hit the notification bell for much more satisfactory in the future. For now though, thanks again for watching and have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye bye <laughs>